Hello, everyone. I'm Don May, International Customer Success Manager for Spider Strategies, and welcome to our webinar today, focusing on tracking individual employee performance in Spider Impact. If you've watched our past webinars, you've seen discussions about managing at all levels of the organization using the software and how easy it is to automate your strategy in the software. If you haven't, they're on our website at spiderstrategies.com, free to watch anytime after viewing this webinar. Quick housekeeping note, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, please ask your questions in the question box. We will respond once the webcast has ended. Here at Spider Strategies, we are often asked, can Spider Impact manage strategic performance down to the employee level? It's not something that we often highlight, it's not seen in our collateral, but the actual resounding answer is yes. One of the best features of our software is not only can you track employee performance, but you can link it directly to the overall organizational strategy and get immediate buy-in from those employees. As important as it is for you to track your employees' performance, it's even more important to help them to understand their role in overall business success and how they can best achieve performance goals. When employees are well-informed, they are able to align to an overall strategy and drive business results. This is where the term performance culture comes in. A company with a true performance culture involves the most beneficial behaviors and expectations that lead to superior results for an organization. It also involves putting strategic business plans in place and expecting employees to meet those goals. Employers and managers, are also responsible for defining the duties of their workers and helping employees grow and advance. Essentially, a performance culture drives high achievement from employees and positive results for the organization. Typically, this leads to improved financial results and enables employees to meet customer needs. In addition, this type of culture in the workplace can also help engage employees and retain them for longer periods of time. Our customer hair club has done a phenomenal job at this. Let's talk a little more about that. Hair Club has seen great success with tracking their employees' impact on overall performance optimization in our software. As Hair Club is in the business of helping people with hair loss regain self-confidence by regrowing, restoring, or replacing their hair, they quote, built the entire Spider Impact platform around the notion that informed employees stage life-changing transformations for our clients, and that's what drives growth, end quote. Therefore, Hair Club's balanced scorecard focuses on measuring three main questions. Do the employees understand the company's goals? Do the employees know how they help fulfill those, those company goals? And does their manager meet with them weekly for updates and coaching? With Spider Impact, Hair Club has become an organization that understands how they can work together to support the needs of others. Employees have started to quantify the value they provide the organization and understand how what they do drives growth, enabling true performance management at the individual level. Essentially, Spider Impact helps Hair Club improve business metrics while improving lives. Their quote, not ours. Visit spiderstrategies.com and click on resources to find more customer success stories like this one and to read the full Hair Club story. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to use our software to monitor and correct performance behaviors, compare and contrast employee performance at a glance, utilize initiatives to course correct behavior and drive future performance, and facilitate results-based one-on-one conversations. So let's get into it. As we look at the software, we're gonna see that we're utilizing our example company called Mobile World. It is a global telecom fictional company that we've created for the purposes of this demo. What you're going to see is the hierarchy underneath Mobile World. You can see that we've utilized all the separate business units and departments such as finance, marketing, customer support, and sales. Within Spider Impact, each one of these departments or sub-business units is technically its own organization. And so the software would allow you to have not only top tier levels like the executive Mobile World level, you could have departmental or business unit levels like finance or marketing or sales, and you can have departmental or supervisor or even employee organizations 
So you can take it all the way from the top level all the way down to the employee level. And each one of these organizations is going to receive the ability to add strategy maps, dashboards, charts, and reports, briefings, which are interactive presentations similar to PowerPoint, scorecards, initiatives, and the ability to store files. So as you move through the hierarchy, you'd have the capability to create individual scorecards for every single organization, or you do have the ability to template those and use a copy and paste mentality to sort of quickly and efficiently create new organizations. We'll show you how to do that in a second, but that can be very beneficial when you have you know, a really a huge amount of employees and you need to create different scorecards for every single one of them. As we look at the mobile world strategy, we're gonna see that they have their four perspectives based on the balanced scorecard, and they're going to, we're gonna focus on improved customer satisfaction underneath their customer perspective. Here we can see customer satisfaction a score of 5.17, and that the KPI data used in the calculation is that of the customer satisfaction survey. When we look at the customer satisfaction survey, we can see the score and we can see the trend, but more importantly, we can see this link. And what that means is that this is a KPI that's actually being brought into the scorecard from another scorecard within the organization. In this case, it's going to be underneath the customer support lever. If I go to the customer support organization, I click on their KPIs, you can simply see here that the customer satisfaction survey exists here. This data can be input manually into the system, or it can be automatically updated via connections to Excel spreadsheets, Google Sheets, or MySQL or SQL databases. One of the keynotes is that I could also link this departmental scorecard to that the individual scorecards of the employees beneath it, meaning that I would be able to link every single customer satisfaction survey score from each employee underneath this customer satisfaction KPI here, and that's the score generated would be based on all of our employees' scores, thereby allowing an employee to see how their score directly affects the larger organizational's strategy objective as seen here with customer satisfaction surveys. This is going to help gain immediate buy-in because a simple change in a certain employee's score may actually have an effect on the overall customer satisfaction survey for the entire organization. So it's really easy to gain buy-in from the employees in that instance. For this example, we're going to focus on the customer support department and we're gonna focus on Mike's team. Mike has three employees underneath him. So we're going to select that. And notice that Mike's customer support manager organization is set up with scorecards showcasing all of his team's KPIs, like calls answered, average time to answer, and the same customer satisfaction survey scores. We can see that those scores were down in February. So that might be something that we need to take a look at. Here we're going to see what the goal for the customer satisfaction survey is what we've determined to be a red level for that and what the normalized score of their actual performance would be. Right now they're at 3.31 as they're just underneath that red line. We can see if any notes have been added or if anything else in the system has been related to the specific KPI scorecard. As we talked about earlier, Mike's organization has the ability to have strategy maps, dashboards, charts, reports, and briefings. If we take a look at the charts and reports, we can see that at a glance, we'll be able to see all of the red KPIs on Mike's team's overall performance for this period of February, 2021. Since this is dynamic, we can also change this. We can check out January. We can do this quarterly, yearly, or year to date. We're gonna keep it on February, 2021. We can even see a three month downward trending report where going to showcase those specific KPIs for the month of February that were in a downward trend. We'll also be able to see a three-month upward trend. So on a more positive note, we can see all those KPIs that were heading up compared to the prior period within February of 2021 and see and actually see what their performance was in the two months prior. If we head over to dashboards, we do have the ability to create 
visual examples of this data in a way that makes it easy to understand how you're performing at a glance. So we're looking at Mike's team's center key measures. This is a culmination of his entire team, the averages and the total count of calls handled, first call resolution, average time to resolve, things like that. Here, we have the calls handled and calls answered percentage report. Uh, this is a chart that's generated through the report generator, the report writer, and added to the dashboards here. And now we can quickly at a glance see how this, how these two KPIs have been performing and compare them instantaneously. We also have a key performance reports overview dashboard where we can see those red KPI reports, three month upward and downward trending reports on the same screen at the same time. Uh, all of these become scrollable, if you will, uh, to be able to look at the entire report. Again, these are all dynamic, so they will shift right along with the date um, in terms of the periodicity that you choose. And lastly, we have a performance by customer service rep. So Mike, as a manager, has the ability to create this dashboard where he's got each one of his employees measured out at one time so he can look and compare and contrast and look at the performance of all of them all at once and see if maybe there's an employee that he needs to reward or if there's one that he needs to have a conversation with uh, because there are some opportunities for them to address. In this case, we are going to focus on Kyle. So as we can see here, Kyle's help desk calls were around a 3.62, so almost at the red line. And then we can see that he's had a precipitous drop off in performance between December and January in terms of his calls handled and percent answered. So he's dropped all the way down here in his answered calls. His customer satisfaction survey scores are also kind of in the tank at a 2.67. So this would lead us to go see what's going on with Kyle. Now, as I go look at Kyle's scorecards, you're gonna notice that his are set up exactly the same as Mike's, only the data is being driven specifically by what's Kyle's actual performance. So while Mike's is a roll-up, Kyle is getting his actual performance in his scorecards and on his dashboards and reports. And so here we can see his trends and we can see that if we look at his customer satisfaction survey scores, that they were in the yellow September and then they've just proceeded to decline uh, all the way into January, a slight uptick in February, but still way below where we need him to be. This allows us to then decide to have a performance review with Kyle. And to do that, we're going to utilize briefings. So if I click on a briefing, we've generated a performance review for Kyle simply by taking specific dashboards or charts and reports and sending them to the briefing, compiling it, putting it together, and then we'll be able to present it to him. So as we look at Kyle's performance review, we click start, and now we can start to have that conversation with Kyle. So this is where we, we can review those upward and downward reports, his red KPIs, and right within here, we can you know, have conversations around calls handled. We can click and right into the scorecard, look at the trends, see if there are any notes that need to be discussed to give us greater context around what's going on with that specific KPI. Once we're done having that conversation, we just click out and now we're back into the briefing and we'll continue with the performance review. This is where we can look at Kyle's dashboard. And you know, one of the things that we can notice here is that Kyle has some really good first call resolution scores. So, and his transfer rate is low. So that means that he's, once he's talking to the customer, he's really good. He's, he's able to get uh, the, the problem resolved and he's not needing to transfer it to a second level tech. It looks like there's an issue though, in terms of time, right? So the time to resolve these issues is taking a little bit longer than we would like. It also stands to reason that Kyle's not getting to as many calls as we would like him to get to as his goal is 250 and he's sitting around 202. The average time for him to answer the phone is up at seven when we need it to be at three seconds. So we can click in here, and kind of see what the trends look like. And it looks like it's been on the steady incline for a while and it's even just dropped from its high of eight seconds. So now we know that while Kyle is you know, pretty good with handling with those issues, it's taking him a really long time to do it. And as such, he's also not getting to as many calls as we need him to be. As we continue moving through 
the performance review, we'll be able to see those same charts and reports that we saw for Mike uh, and have those conversations. Look at his red KPIs for February. Again, this is all dynamic. So if we need to change the periodicity for monthly to quarterly or for a yearly meeting, uh, we can do that as well. We have his three month downward trend here and then we end with his upward trend as we wanna end the briefing or the, the performance review on a positive note. So after this conversation with Kyle, we've decided that we must interject in order to course correct some of this performance behavior. And we can do that utilizing initiatives. But this situation seems very similar to something we dealt with with Carly. So if I go to Carly's organization and I click on her initiatives, we can see that Carly has an increase in call handling capability initiative. So let's check out what happened with Carly's performance. You can see here that in February, she was killing it all green all the time. If we take a look at her scorecards and we go to her customer satisfaction survey, we can see that her scores were pretty low in April and May. And she's had pretty good performance in terms of her ability to answer the calls. Uh, her first call resolution was also a little low, um, but as you can see, we ran these initiatives and we've started to see an incline in her performance. So let's take a look at this initiative. We asked her to do two simple tasks, which were analyze past tickets for common requests and create template responses for common issues. We started this on March 8th and it, and it gave it a due date of June 12th. She completed it on May 5th, which was 38 days early. And you can see the status updates that she performed in the system. We then tied this initiative to the specific KPIs that we wanted to work on for Carly. So average time to resolve, calls handled, and that customer satisfaction survey. And because we have enough data, the system has let us know that this initiative has had a positive overall impact on her actual performance. So before the initiative started, her satisfaction survey was projected to have a value of 90.25 in May of 2020. The actual value she hit was 94.46. So that's a large enough difference to say there's a positive correlation with the actual performance, meaning this initiative worked for Carly. So if it worked for Carly, it should be good enough to work for Kyle. So it's as simple as copy and pasting, and we're going to go to Kyle's organization, and boom, here is his increased call handling capability. You can see we have the same two tasks, and we've assigned them and related them to the exact same KPIs. He's going to start this in two days on March 25th, and we're gonna run it till April 16th. But we also noticed that Kyle was having issues getting to the phone. So it might behoove us to run a second initiative for Kyle where we focus on his ability to get to the phone. So let's start a new initiative. It's as simple as clicking a new initiative item. We're gonna say that this one is called improve call answer time. We're gonna start it on March 25th and we're gonna end it on May 20th. We're going to assign it to both Kyle and to Mike, his manager. We're gonna create. Underneath that, we're gonna add a couple of tasks. So we're gonna say a hardware audit. That's going to start 25th and end on the 26th. But we're actually gonna assign that specifically to his manager, Mike, so that Mike goes in and handles his hardware audit. This new task is going to be to minimize time away from desk. We're gonna start that immediately and we're gonna run that for a month about until April 30th. And we're gonna assign that specifically to Kyle. So let's make sure these are underneath exactly where they need to be. So we've got his initiative completed. From there, we'll be able to add related items. So we're gonna go to the specific KPIs that we need to worry about for Kyle. So 
calls handled, add, and we'll add a second one, calls answered, add. So now we have some predetermined info. So it, the system is going to generate some impact statements, but this is just as simple as it is to create an initiative within the system and then tie it to specific KPIs. So now, if I want to log in as Kyle, I now can see that I have the two tasks that have been assigned to me in that brand new initiative. So Kyle has been working and He's been following the exact steps of the initiative, and now we're able to see that his scores are gradually starting to improve. So it's a really easy way to not only have those results-based conversations, but then utilize the initiatives to course correct that performance um, and check in with the employees weekly to make sure that they're doing what they need to do to drive the performance in the right direction. Generally, in a company of any size, you're going to have movement. People are going to leave, people are going to get promoted. So what happens if I have this all set up and then things start to change? So let's say that Mike did a really good job of turning around Carly and Kyle's performance. And so now he's been promoted and now i am been moved to that customer support manager role. So everything has Mike's name on it, but it's just as simple is making some quick changes and taking it from Mike's team and moving it to Don's team. So I hit the refresh button. I go here, go to Don's team, and now I am the manager. I've inherited that team. I have access to all of their data, so it's really easy for me to not only see their specific dashboards and scorecards, but I still have the rollups and the templates are all underneath my name now, and I have the ability to access them. If I go to scorecards, specific KPIs, these can now be assigned to me as opposed to Mike, and so now they'll show up as my KPIs inside of my job role responsibilities when I log in on the home screen but there could still be more movement. So we've just learned that Mary's team is being dispersed and moved into different parts of the organization. So they no longer will be under the customer support lever. However, we will be adding Caitlin to our team. But before we, we show Caitlin, let's just take a quick glance back and see exactly what was happening in this organization before. You can see that if we tear this back to February of 2021, we had 695 calls handled by that team. But if we bring Caitlin in, we can now see that that number will be automatically moved by adding her underneath and refreshing the page. So that went from 695 to 912. All of her information has now been input into my organization. It's been added in my rollup. Now, the team rollups are automatically done, but if I wanted to put her onto my dashboard, I would have to do that automatically. Now, my favorite piece here is that it's pretty easy to update a, a dashboard. All I would have to do is click Add Widget, add a speedometer. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to find Caitlin. And I'm going to put her help desk call score right underneath. I can then decide 
am I showing the period? Am I showing the score? Uh, am I going to see the change from the previous period there as well? And now we can see how easy it is to add pieces to, to, to my dashboard from there. All of that's going to happen individually once I make the change from my organization uh, or move her from Mary's organization to my organization. So as you can see, that's pretty, that's relatively simple. What if we hired somebody, right? So we, like we said before, this is a template that we've already created. So we're gonna edit that. We're gonna copy as template to create our new employee. We are going to place this new employee in my organization and we're going to name him Sam. We'll add some quick prefixes. And now Sam has been created. When I click on Sam scorecards, you're going to see that they are exactly the same as everybody else else's, but none of the data has been added quite yet because obviously Sam is brand new. But I don't need to individually go in and create each one of these dashboards or these charts um, separately. I can just utilize that templated copy and be able to add each new employee. As we head back out, let me go back into the briefing. So again, we showed you how to monitor and correct performance behaviors, how to compare and contrast employee performance at a glance, how to utilize initiatives to course correct that behavior, and how to facilitate those one-on-one -on -one conversations utilizing briefings. If you're a current customer and you would like like some help about implementing this into your own environment, please reach out to your customer success advocate or your local reseller uh, to ask them about it. If you're a prospective customer and you would like a 30-day free trial to try this with your own team, it's just as simple as heading out to our website, clicking on the Get Started button, clicking one of these Call to Action buttons, filling out the form, and submitting it. A member of our team will get back to you immediately and help you set that up. If you have any other webinar ideas, feel free to email them over to marketing at spiderstrategies.com. And it's been a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much for attending. We look forward to your questions and seeing you next month where we discuss all of the different scoring types within Spider Impact. Thank you so much and have a great day.